Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Appreciate y'all coming back. Tonight we're gonna uh, get back on our little 70, your little ATC 70. We got some parts come in and uh, we're gonna fix the tires. I, I told you that when we got the bike in, I thought that it's a real common problem. These are two piece wheels. And if you've never seen a two piece wheel, they're two actual halves of the wheel that are actually bolted together. And in between those two halves, there's a rubber O-ring that looks something like these. And so that o-ring sits in a channel and then when you put the wheel together that o-ring creates the seal now i don't know that that's the problem but that's what i'm guessing is the problem and sometimes you just got to take an educated guess um that's <laughs> that's that's part of mechanic and too it's, it's not always an exact science and so it's a common problem i've had it happen to myself it it, it can be frustrating this is a cheaper alternative than tubes in the tires and i think tubes sorry i'm cleaning up a little bit tubes in the tires is a good option too they run you about 10 12 dollars a piece um depending on where, where you get them so it's a 30 dollar fix if that's the problem the the rubber seals or the o-rings what gaskets whatever you want to call them uh they run you about 10 bucks for all three so if it works it will save you you know a third of the cost so i'm going to take the wheels off i'm going to break them down and then we're going to fire this back up and i'm going to show you how to put them together now these are pretty easy to tell which is which but on a two-piece wheel in this configuration this is a three lug bolt pattern and what you'll find is three of these hold the wheel together and three of them hold the assembly both wheels to the actual trike this one's easy to tell because the factory used uh, stove bolts and so they're rounded and you really can't go wrong. It's the only three that's available. But a lot of times guys will put these stove bolts in incorrectly. They'll put them in from the other direction or they'll lose them and they'll just use regular hardware. And so you have six that <laughs> they all look the same. So I'm just telling you that when you, what you want to do is check first one. And if it's threaded all the way through to the hub on the back side and doesn't have a nut, then you know that's the one of the three. And then you know it's easy to figure out the pattern. Now we're back over here to the table. We've got our wheel off. Remember these three with the stove bolts actually hold the wheel together. But before you take them loose, that's gonna cause the wheel to, to come apart and it can actually fly up and, and, and at you. So what you wanna do, this tire is holding some air, but it is leaking. So I don't want to have two that work and one that doesn't. So we're going to go ahead and fix them all. And I'm taking the core out of here because I don't want, you see there's a little bit of pressure left in there. Probably wouldn't have been enough to, uh, to make a big difference. But if you had just aired these up and you had 20 PSI or 15 PSI in here and you start taking these bolts loose, it's going to let go. So uh, just to be mindful of that. 12 millimeters, same as what holds it onto the bike. You see there's a lock washer and a stove bolt on all three. Now, if you're lucky, they'll come apart pretty easily, but that's not always the case. Be a real bear. You can sit there and, and, and run a tire iron all the way around here and work them and spray them and, and lubricate them. And, and it's a real job. And, and, I, and I'm not saying you can't do it. People's done it. If the tires are new, <laughs> newer, it's a whole lot easier. These tires are not. See how they're dry, they're dry rotted around the edges. These tires are old. They have been on these wheels a while. I use the tire machine to break the beads down. So if you're going to do that, if you have access to a tire machine, if you're going to take them to somebody that has a tire machine, go ahead and leave them bolted together. So when they compress them with the machine, the two halves don't try to slice, or, you know, pull apart from one another. That's not what you want. What you want to do is leave them bolted together, put them in the machine, break the bead with the bead breaker, then take the wheel back loose, take the bolts out of it, and then by hand, you see I sprayed some lubricant underneath them and that's just so they'll come apart a lot easier. They'll go back together a lot easier. Now here's the O-ring that we were talking about. Remember this wheel did seal a little bit. So I'm, I'm really pleased about that. I think that's, that's great. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace this. But since we're here and this was not the entire problem, the tire still leaked. It still took two days to go flat. So what, what we're gonna do on this is we're gonna clean this on the inside of the bead. It doesn't take that long. A wire wheel on a drill does a really good job of that.
With this, you can get the same results from a sandblaster, maybe a little bit better results out of a sandblast cabinet if you have one. But if you don't have one and you have a cordless drill, these are about $4. And they last a really long time. It's a good investment. Something that's good for electrical work, if you're cleaning off grounds, uh, uh, cleanup work before paint. I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of good uses for these. They come in different sizes, so you can get into smaller or larger places. All right. So now what you want to do is you're going to want to clean all this up. You can go rinse it off in a hose or you can wipe it down real good. All right, back to some basics. You know, on this little 70, we've got a busted front fender and a busted rear. And what I'm trying to show you on this particular video is that you have to set a line that you don't, you're not willing to cross. You need to set a budget, whether that line be based off of, you know, a financial requirements or maybe a time requirement. You could completely redo this, this three wheeler and all the parts are available and there's some really good dedicated websites that wants to sell you those parts and there's nothing wrong with that if that's what your intentions are doing if if you if your goal is to have one of these in your man cave then they are a great platform to work on if your goal is just to restore one to the way it was factory maybe give it to a a, a, a child or a grandchild or, or, or something like that or maybe even keep it for yourself that's fine too but I'm looking at this as more as a doing the minimal amount of repairs to get the maximum amount of returns. And so we purchased a, a $250. We purchased this trike. Uh, it didn't run. And now what's it going to take to maximize our uh, investment? How much money and time are we willing to put into it before we're actually upside down in this project? And in Three wheelers are no different than cars or, or houses or boats or anything else. You have to set a budget. And so for us, what that is going to entail is it's going to be fix all the mechanical problems so it's safe and dependable. That's first and foremost, always on my, on, on my agenda is mechanical first. And then secondary is going to be the aesthetics. And so you want to make it look as good as you can, but we're not going to cover up anything. We're not going to make any, any repairs that are not um, a quality repair. If it's, uh, if, if it's not a quality job, then we're not going to do it. What I like to do is I like to start at the big ending of a crack and then work my way back. And what I've got is a, just a, an open pair of uh, channel locks here, some big ones. And that allows me to kind of get, you know, hold and, and, and have a free hand. So it's cracked all the way up and I've got it good and flush on the outside. Remember, this repair is going to be hidden on the inside. So we want to do all our repairs on the bottom side of the fender. You can blend the top, but you will always see it. Now, if you wanted to actually restore this fender and, and blend it on the top and then wet sand it down and then buff it back, you can certainly do that. I'm not wanting to go that far. That's several hours worth of work. This fender's $53 online. I checked it two days ago. If you put more than a couple hours into this thing, you're upside down. You might as well have just bought a fender and, uh, and put it on it and, and called it a wash because that's exactly what it would be. You put three, four, five hours into this fender and you're upside down. Unless your goal is to save an original fender. If you've got a fender that's original to the bike and you want to save it just because that's your want to, then by all means go for it. But if you're looking just to get in and get out, do some quality repairs, then by all means, the smart money is to buy a new fender and put it on it. But I will tell you, you put a new fender on a bike like this, and then the back fender is going to look even worse. So then you're almost forced to buy both front and rear so they'll match. And then you know where that snowballs. Well, now the tank doesn't look as good. Now the seat doesn't look as good. Well, now the handlebars don't look as good. So that's how these projects snowball. And that's what you got to be mindful of. You got to be prepared for that, to draw a line and say, no, 
This is as far as we're going to take it. This is where we want to be financially and time invested. And then from there, we let the next owner carry on. Here's our repair. Here's our crack. Comes all the way across. I got a little heavy-handed with it here. It just did not flow well for me. But you know, it is what it is, and uh, and nobody's perfect. But for a structural repair, I'm extremely pleased with that. It's very strong. It's going to do its job again, and it saved us fifty-three dollars. And so that's that's what we were talking about. That those are the little decisions that you have to make when you take on a project like this. Is what is your What's your limit? How far are you willing to go financially? How much time do you have to invest in this project? Those are all real questions and questions you need to have real answers to. So here we are, my next move on this project. We've, I've rebuilt the, uh, we've got our pieces in to rebuild our, our pull start, so it's working function like it's supposed to, so good about that. Next, we're gonna put a, re a carb kit in our carburetor. We're gonna try to save that. And then we're probably gonna clean it up. I think that's mechanically all we really need to do to it. I did get a set of tires in. So here we got a set of three tires. And uh, just basic knobbies, nothing, nothing crazy because the next owner might not want chrome wheels. They might not want street tires. When you fix something up to sell, you need to have the largest audience possible. You, if you customize something, then the amount of people that are interested in buying it gets less, smaller and smaller and smaller. You put hopped up two-stroke engines in this thing, and all of a sudden, all of the original guys don't want to look at it anymore. All the guys that want to put their kids on it don't want to look at it anymore. So your customer base is shrunk to only those group of people that are interested in a hopped up two stroke 70. Those are great, but you gotta think about who your, who your target audience is. My target audience, I want the biggest audience possible. So for me, I wanna invest only what's necessary that keeps the price low. That's another way of having a larger audience. The price point limits how many people are interested in your, in your product. So, Putting something back stock will always maximize your potential customers, that's it. And so someone who wants one to fix up themselves would still be interested if somebody that wants to do a two-stroke swap, somebody that wants to put chrome wheels on it and suspension and stretch it and all of those cool things, those people still want the nicest bones of a bike they can find. And generally that is going to be running and driving. Everything works like it's supposed to, so they're not chasing out problems much easier to do a motor swap on a bike that's already running uh, than a bike that's just a frame and you've got to kind of hunt for the wiring harness and, and, and things of that nature. So for me, take it back as close to stock as you can get. It doesn't have to be original tires, but Nobby's were the original style of tire. All right, so here's a couple of tips. If you can, take your valve stems out. I went ahead and just cut these out. Again, all three of these tires were flat. I really thought it was going to be the inner 
o-ring that sits here but all three of these had one so i'm not sure maybe the tires were just so bad and dry rotted so a couple of things to do we're just painting these i told you i like to use a stainless steel rust-oleum makes a nice stainless steel it's a nice silver it's a little brighter than the factory silver so it looks good um, again this is not a complete restoration we're just trying to make it look as good as we can i like to do two coats on the face of the wheel and i like to do an, one coat on the inside of the wheel and the reason i do this because these specifically are two-piece wheels and we need a mating surface here that is 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 perfect so it's not going to leak and so we're going to take a couple extra steps i'm going to do a, a, a single pass of paint on the inside that's going to fill in any small imperfections in the metal we're going to put our new gaskets or o-rings on and i'm probably going to take it one step further i'm going to put a little rtv on here or, um, a gasket former or gasket maker just to hedge our bet so we don't wake come out the next morning <laughs> with a flat tire that's that's a pet peeve of mine so while they're apart we're going to go ahead and take some precautionary steps to make sure we don't have flat tires in the morning we're going to pick up where we left off we've had our carburetor sitting in our uh, cleaning tank over there and it, and it does a good job um, a couple of things to note when you're buying these rebuild kits uh, this particular one is a shindy kit and uh, when you're working with your your re your carburetor re rebuild kit it's a good idea to take your old parts and your new parts and you can kind of lay them out and that way you can kind of keep everything organized everything that's going to get replaced i'm going to put on this back table or this back napkin here and that way we know when it gets replaced that it was replaced with the right thing now i'm not certain everything is going to be in this kit sometimes there's some extra things in the kit and so this is a good way to keep up with what you have and what you don't have like it's not going to replace the screws in the bowl or the screws in the uh, the petcock but it will replace the seat and the jets and the needles. It's not going to replace the, the bar that holds the float on, so that will get reused. This screen, I didn't, wasn't sure if it was going to get uh, replaced or not, so we went ahead and cleaned it. O-rings do come in the kit. So everything on this top napkin here, paper towel, is going to get replaced, and everything on the bottom napkin is going to get reused. So that's what you want to focus on in getting cleaned up. Uh, so these are the parts that we're going to clean up a little bit more. They're a little dirty. These items are all clean. So here we go. Not going to spend a lot of time with this. We've done carburetor kits um, in the past. The most important one, well, I shouldn't say important, is this gasket here. This one is this one is really bad about leaking, especially when it's been taken on and off several times over you know 30 something years. That's your bowl gasket. Last one really to be put on. All right, guys, <clears throat> so in taking this track apart, I really anticipated these gaskets to be bad on the wheels, um, and they weren't, and, and that, that kind of surprised me. And, but what it told me was that the, the tires were worse off than I thought. So I made a, a managerial decision 
these were our tires and though they looked good and I really wanted to run them if you look here in the corners they are dry rod a lot worse than I expected and the air is literally was leaking right through the tires um, I could have tubed them and, and that's an option but tubes nowadays I think they're around twelve dollars a piece but I think a new tire in the long run is a lot better than a dry rotted split tire that looked bad but held air because it had a tube in it so that was the decision I had to make so we ordered three new tires we got new tires I went ahead and even though these o-rings were in good shape I went ahead and replaced them too just for cheap insurance and and with that being said we're gonna go one step further and, I, and now I, some of y'all are probably not gonna agree with this but I'm, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna do it anyway so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little RTV around the rim and then I'm gonna insert my o-ring like such okay we're gonna put the tire over it we're gonna take the other side I'll put a little more RVT on this side and then we'll sandwich the two together I think the combination between the seal and the RVT is not necessarily a bad thing I would not recommend just RVT in it though I know some guys do um, so I'm gonna do a little bit of both and, and really my, my reason for this I don't want to break I don't want to have to do this job twice so we're gonna want we just I'm just putting just a, 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 a thin coat on here not enough to do a whole lot but imperfections in the metal from pitting and these wheels are pitted inside and out they're structurally very sound um, and they're in good shape or I wouldn't run them but uh, I just want to hedge my bet that's all we're doing is hedging our bet and so that would be the first step right there so then we take our new tires and we just place these now these are actually uh, this is an Ocelot which is is a decent company I've used them on a lot of different projects um, I don't have any problems with them Make sure your gasket is in place it goes all the way around and what you want to do is you want to line up the square holes and the round holes and the square holes are for these stove bolts and you'll have three in each wheel and you're going to want your stove bolts to come from the valve stem side to the inside of the wheel this is the inside of the wheel and these square pegs basically is what's going to keep the valve or keep the uh, the bolt from spinning I do them finger tight to make sure that they're centered. They, all three of these holes, so when I go to mount them on the trike, they are and you can tell when somebody does these backwards because the front side, you'll have the, the, the nut side coming through, and then it'll be very confusing when you go to put it on the bike. Now you can take the valve core out of your valve stem that will make it a little easier to air up if you're not getting a good seal. Let's get some air and finish, finish this tire up. All right, so once you get your rim assembled on your tire, just air it up. Most of these will just inflate, but if you get one that doesn't, um, you can always take the valve core out of the stem. That doubles the amount of air that goes in the tire. And with that much added uh, pressure, Pushing down on the tire will help it seal, as this one did. Okay. I need a little bit more air, but I think we're good. So at this point, once you get your tire on, 
plenty of air in it. I like to give them a good bounce. Make sure the bead is seated without actually having to just dump a ton more air back in it. I'm not gonna bore you with doing all three. This is how it's done. This is how I do it. It works really well this way. And, uh, and you know, I think, I think you'll have success with it as well. All right, so you've probably seen me by this point in the video. I've done our plastic repair on our fender. I'm really pleased with how well that turned out. Um, got it back on and installed. And the same time we were painting the wheels, I went ahead and uh, wire brushed our axle on the uh, six inch grinder. Just, you know, evened out, took all the surface rust off of it and then applied a good coat of aluminum colored paint uh, to the axle. What we're gonna do is be sure and grease this up before you reinstall it in the bike. All right, so now we've got our front hub assembled. We've got our uh, hub mounted onto our wheel here. And it's just three bolts. They come in from this side, the valve stem side. And so that's gonna be the right side, actually the left side, um, as the way it's on the bike. I'm gonna go ahead and take my grease and I'm gonna put actually inside the hub because if you put it on the axle, it's just gonna wash off. This really would be the best time to replace your bearings. Um, they're not that expensive, but again, this is not a bike I'm planning on keeping, so keep that in mind. You know, everything we do here there's there's a reason and a motive behind it and what we're doing here is we're trying to get this bike up and running for a reasonable amount of money we don't want to sink a fortune into it because then when we go to sell it we'd have to ask that much more money for it so i'm sure somebody's going to say well while you're sitting there you should have put uh new bearings in the front and yeah you can but bearings are 25 dollars and so if i put 25 dollars, that means i got to raise the price up another 25 or, or more and so we're trying to do this on a budget. We want to get it up and running, dependable and safe. All right, another trick you can do is once you get your tire wheel assembly in, the, in between the forks, and on this one I had to spread the forks just a little bit to make enough room, is insert a screwdriver on the opposite side. And that kind of keeps everything lined up and you can feel the pipe that's inside the hub. You can kind of make sure it's all centered. And then you can see the screwdriver pulls out as the axle comes through, you just want to make sure it's lined up. There's all that grease we put in there. Yeah, we're getting this out. Let's go ahead and put that back. All right. So there we go. Just take the wipe off that excess grease. It's not going to hurt anything. While we painted our axle, I went ahead and painted our retaining washer and nut. Be sure to tighten this down and add a cotter pin. All right, having some uh, some camera problems tonight. Y'all batteries are cutting in and out, I'm not sure why. So let me make sure I don't know where, <laughs> where we stopped filming at. So as a recap, I went ahead and I re-welded our, uh, our crash bar here, our, our rear bar, our grab bar. But this was all split. Remember this was bent up real bad. So we ground that down and welded that back and got it. It's good and solid. Put four bolts in it like it was supposed to be when I got it, it only had one. And that's what caused it to be broken. I think if somebody wrecked it with one bolt in it and when this pitched up, it bent it. So that's good, that's taken care of. A couple of y'all pointed out in the last video that this actually has the original spark plug holder still in place. Um, I've had a couple of these and this is the first one I've actually seen still here. So that's kind of neat. I uh, got our new tires installed. Went ahead and put a uh, little RVT, excuse me, RTV in there, along with new O-rings. We wire wheeled our wheels and got them cleaned up. We got them painted. We got new valve stems all the way around. We got our carburetor kit. That's a shindy kit. We put it in. Got it done. I think that's going to be. A, I think that's going to be a winner. We opted to go with the Uni air filter, and I'll tell you why. The reason we went with the uni is because the uni was $25. I needed both side caps, the bar that holds the two caps in, the pre-screen and the filter. All total was gonna run about $75 to rebuild that air cleaner assembly. That was at least a, you know, a cheaper option. When I sell this, I'll give the housing to the next owner. If he wants to rebuild it 
or her that's on her or him plastic tanks gonna be just fine it's gonna clean up just fine um, grips are good that's the way they are the brakes are really good on this bike as as you know, as they are I didn't have to do anything to them I didn't even adjust them we went ahead and greased our front front axles we got our hubs I went ahead and took the time to paint the hubs as well I think it just finishes off the look I mean if you're gonna do it do it right so again it doesn't cost a lot of money we were missing two dogs on the inside of our pull cord and the e-clip that actually retains that assembly together everything else was here the cords here the cables here everything is here we were missing the three bolts that were holding this on as you see i've got some standardized hardware in here it is metric uh, but it is not the standard uh, honda so, uh, hardware straighten this out it was so rusted up so bad it's pitted really bad as you can see just shot it with the same aluminumized paint that we do the wheels with i'm not doing a restoration this is to get it nice and presentable for the next owner Again, for me, the most important thing for me is to walk up to a bike, dead cold, as cold as it can be. And it starts. That's more important than anything else. Front fender turned out really good. Remember, it had a big crack all the way through it. There are some staple impressions. I got a little heavy handed with the staple stapler. Sorry about that, but it's solid. I mean, it ain't going anywhere. It's as strong as it was from the factory. Um, pretty close anyway. <laughs> and I do have this little booger spot here right in the middle, but honestly at 25 feet, I don't think anybody's gonna notice. But with that being said, not wanting to spend a ton of money on this project, just getting it presentable for the next part, next owner. I'm gonna take a shot. Someone's already been in here. I can see they tried to, I, I, I guess they tried to hot plastic the, the, the hot staple, the, or they tried to melt the fenders back together and that didn't work. So we're gonna do it the right way. And we're actually gonna staple all of this and we're gonna save these original fenders. I know they look really bad on the outside and on the inside, but they're original fenders and the next owner can spend $160 on a pair of fenders if that's what he wants now that brings up this the, the decision on the seat and I'm gonna tell you I haven't decided yet this is hundred and eighty five dollars plus shipping so I think around 215 for a new foam seat cover and seat base already assembled already put together and earlier in this video I told you that was a, a pretty good deal and it is because of what the parts cost individually a covers 50 a foams 45 and a pan i think it's 65. so you add all that up you're paying them about 25 dollars to put it together for you to where all you have to do is take it out of the box and bolt it to your bike 25 bucks that's, that's really not a lot of savings when you consider it's right the seams are straight you didn't poke a screwdriver through it and it looks good and it's the right one it'd be the blue one with the seven zero on the side i may list the bike like it is if I don't get any bites on it, you know, then I'll order the seat, I'll put the seat on it, I'll pull the ad down, I'll have to adjust the price, and I'll put it back out there. There's a lot of y'all looking for projects that are small like this. These bikes don't take up a lot of room. They're fun little bikes, grown-ups can ride them, they're great pit bikes. They don't weigh that much. You can throw them in the back of the, of the trailer, and when you're at the pits or the racetrack or whatever, you pull it out, you fire it up, you're the talk of the town. That's why guys, uh, grown-ups, still buy and ride these little things. Because they're fun. That's just all there is to it. They're, they're just fun. So let's talk about that. Let's see, where are we at? We're 254 on the bike, 250 for the bike. We've got about $80 in miscellaneous parts. That's the dogs in the starter. That's a spark plug. That's a, a coal wire. That is, what is that? That's the air filter. It's uh it's a whole bunch of stuff. The O-rings that go in the wheels, um, just odds and ends, stuff like that. It's about 80 bucks. Then you add another 100 for the tires. They were $32 a piece, I think it was, or $30 a piece. So you got $100 worth of tires sitting there. So two, three, 50, 450. So probably say, let's say we got 550 in it. Just cover our bases. We got 550 in it, and I've probably got about five hours in it so you know you can add up whatever your going rate is or what you think your time's worth um it's a lot it's a lot of time 
But uh, shooting a video, <laughs> removing the camera every time you, you want to do something, it adds a lot to that. If I was just out here working, I could probably cut that time in half. But that's okay. I don't mind. Um, it's, it's actually pretty fun. So that's where we're at. We got 550 invested in this. If we do the seat, you're looking at another. So there you go. You, you know, you got 550 in it. If you add another 2, 2, 225 to it, 670, you got 800 bucks in it. So retail on one of these is about 1500 bucks. And I think to get that, you would probably have to put the seat on it to really pull that kind of price. But then again, you're gambling with another $200. Uh, you know, maybe sell it for for 12 with no seat you know it just depends on your market and where you're at putting it on on marketplace you touch such a wide audience of people these bikes are relatively easy to ship i have shipped one of these all the way to arizona and they will fit on a standardized pallet the uh, cost of shipping is about 600 bucks so you got to factor that into to its value now out west these little bikes pull about two grand so I'm gonna staple this, uh, this fender back together. Uh, you've probably seen me do that a couple of times, but uh, I'll put it on time-lapse and let you watch close and as neat as we possibly can. We're gonna put it on the bike and I think we're gonna ride off into the sunset and call this project done. All right, and just like that, we've stapled them up. Are they perfect? <laughs> no, they're not perfect, but uh, they're all one piece. And that is a lot. I mean, the rigidity that's put back into it when you get done with this. I mean, we've still got a metal seat pan on here, guys. And we're still, I mean, it's, it's all one piece. So certainly a less expensive alternative to a new fender, of course. We still haven't addressed the seat itself but uh let's put it on and see where we end up That's a wrap, 1985 ATC 70. Um, it had its challenges. We, we set the points. We, we had to diagnose that problem with no spark. Uh, coil was good, plug was bad. On top of all of that, the plug fouled out as we went for our first ride. Um, it's been a fun project. It really has. That's going from one end to the other. That's, that's plastic stapling, both fenders. That's uh, that's spending money where we needed to. So there we are. Uh, we re-welded the grab bar. It's in good order now. We put bolts in it. It does what it's supposed to do. Um, this is a fun little bike. It does still smoke a little bit. I, before I would make a call on if it needs rings or not because it starts so easy. I mean, not even a full pull of the cord. I would probably run it a little bit before I made that determination. It certainly needs a seat. Um, you wouldn't want to run it like this. <laughs> it's one thing it'd catch you, it'd cut your leg. But wow, what a what a neat save! It's been sitting there derelict for for all these years, and uh, and really within just a few hours and some basic hand tools, it, it's it's not that hard. It's uh, the manuals are free, the videos are free, and uh, there's a lot of information out there. If you join these groups and clubs. There's actually a huge following, and, and you guys know who I'm talking about. These little 70s are hot. Everybody wants them. The kids want them, the grown-ups want them. They're doing a lot of really cool things with them. You, there's even some out there, they're, uh, they're flat tracking these things with 140 hopped up motors, um, go-kart wheels, slicks. I mean, 
pretty nice. They're, they're stretching frames and putting big two-stroke motors in them. It's, uh, it's not your kid's three-wheeler anymore, but it can be. And that's where they started, right there. That was it. That's it, the little 70 ATC 70. Four-speed, again, this is an 85. This is the last year they made it. Uh, it started in 73, which I gotta tell you, if you're good with numbers, 73 was a really, really good year for 73 just so you know and it was a good year for honda too they uh they had the little 70 but it had flames on it y'all just saw preston's video that about the comparison of good better and best he did a really really good review on the on he has 370s over there and did a great comparison of them this certainly would be in the good category not the better or not the best but there again that's up to the next owner i, I didn't buy this bike to keep it i bought it to save it and so I'm gonna sell it. And so that's why every, every decision that you make on a project like this, you need to know what your end result's gonna be. What's your end plan? Are you keeping it? Is it your forever bike? If it is, then blow it apart down to the frame and start over and, and do what you want with it. It's like raising a calf if any of y'all are farmers. You know, you put in the sweat equity and then you put it out there on the market and, and see what it brings. And that's another way of looking at this. It's, uh, yeah, we're saving them, but we're also raising them and sending them off to new homes. And so uh, I kind of like that. That's a nice way to look at it. But as always, thank you for watching. We appreciate it. We're well on our goal to 10,000 this year. And, uh, and that's all because of y'all. I'm doing my part. I'm trying to keep the content relevant, something interesting. I, I've, I've been surprised. A lot of y'all like the longer format, the more detailed. Y'all take care. Good night. Have a great weekend.